the uh, Pac-12 tournament. Uh, first of all, who, whoever wins it, I mean, I would say that right now going into the tournament, you know, I feel good about our conference in that I think both Washington and Cal will be in the NCAA tournament. Uh, after that, I'm not sure. Uh, so I think there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of people, including those two teams, that want to win this thing. And so it's going to be a, a great competition. And, uh, you know, uh, I think everybody will bring their best. And, uh, you know, of course, we would love to win the tournament. But right now we're just focused on you know, one game at a time, looking uh, not too far ahead, but focused on USC. And it's always hard to play teams for a third time. Uh, that's not always the case now in our league because now we have teams that you only play once, either home or away. Uh, but to play a team for a third time and a rival team is, is uh, difficult. You know, they've had a, uh, a very uh, tough season with adversity, especially, you know, after the first four or five games uh, in the conference. In fact, uh, you know, they've lost a number of other kids to injuries. So uh, needless to say, I know that uh, the players – for USC would, would uh, love to uh, finish their season with a win over us. And um, we know we're going to have to bring our A game tomorrow to have success against them. Can you bring your A game four nights in a row? Uh, again, uh, we, we hope to have that opportunity. That means that we've won three nights in a row. Uh, you know, so it's just one one game, one day at a time. But I think our players are excited about the opportunity and, you know, playing well last weekend. Uh, against the two Washington schools, I think definitely was good because it gives us some momentum going into the uh, conference tournament tomorrow. You, feel like you, right you know, I, I think we played very well last Thursday, and uh, we played you know good Saturday uh, against uh, you know the conference champion, um, and so I think uh, you know our our uh, game in Tucson, we played well enough. To give ourselves a chance to win, but didn't get it done. And but but yet, uh, you know, we won the game before that at Arizona State. So I, I think our guys feel confident about uh, you know their ability to perform against anybody in our league on a given night. So you played very well against the Cougs compared against Washington. What's the difference between very well versus what did you do versus ADHD? I didn't realize I said very well versus very good. My bad. Uh, I thought we you know against Washington State we really. I mean, to beat them by 30, I didn't think we were going to go into that game and we were going to win by 30. Uh, you know, I, I really think Washington State's got some good players and uh, they do a good job. Um, so I was really pleased with how our team performed. And then, you know, Washington really played uh, hard against us and played well. You know, they, they didn't know that Cal was going to lose on Sunday. Uh, so they were fighting at that time what, for what they thought was uh, – the outright championship that they controlled. And uh, so that was uh, a good performance by our team. I think both games we played well. And how much of an advantage is playing this tournament in LA for you guys? Well, it, the biggest advantage uh, is obviously the travel, uh, not having to travel um, as far as uh, the other teams in our conference. Um, so, um, you know, I, this is the last year uh, of it being here. And, uh, you know, I think that, uh, you know, for us, you know, having traveled a lot, especially at the end of the year, you know, we had the New York trip there and back and then over to the Arizonas there and back. It's good for us to not have to go on the road again. Um, Uh, uh, you know, I just think that uh, the, the thing about New York, people are so excited from all those other cities in the Big East to go to New York City. New York City is a great place to go, and uh, there's so much to do. And I think L.A., it has you know similar draw, but it's so much more spread out. It's just different. You know, it's a different uh, type of city. Uh, you know, and I, I love visiting uh, New York, but uh, L.A. is definitely 
to me, the greatest city in the world to live in. Uh, and uh, uh, is that where it's that, that's what this, is it been announced? I'm not aware of that. Well, I mean, you know, Vegas has a lot of draw for people uh, to do a lot of things other than just basketball. And so if that is where the Pac-12 tournament ends up going, you know, you can definitely see how that makes sense. It's cheap to get there. It's, you know, the rooms are very uh, reasonable. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, uh, all the teams stay at the same hotel, the JW Marriott, the new one right next to Staples. Is that where you were staying for sports No, no, we stayed uh, actually at uh, the Marriott on, uh, I think, 6 and Figueroa, uh, just up the street from there. Pardon me? Yeah, you know, maybe from the standpoint that, yeah, we've been going down there all all year now, with the exception of the four games we went down to Anaheim. So, yeah, uh, you know, yeah, I like that angle. I'll tell our players that. Coach, uh, when people talk about the decline of the league this year, they point to kind of a dearth in West Coast recruiting talent over the last few years. Do you agree with that? I don't know uh, who you're quoting. Uh, but uh, I think there's been a lot of good players uh, in the West. And, uh, you know, things go in cycles. I, mean, I did read something in Sporting News that we've had three McDonald's All-Americans from the state of California the last two or three years, and Canada's had five. I didn't know that. Uh, but, uh, you know, th things always go in cycles, uh, including, you know, talent level in different areas in the country. You know, it doesn't always just remain – one level and um, you know the younger classes coming up here in Southern California I think are, are very good uh, here in the near future Ryan Wright uh, who played for us here in uh, 06 and uh, 07 uh, so I guess 05 06 something like that Actually, since then, I recruited uh, another kid actually from Vancouver. So, actually, I think it was because uh, I remember I found out about Josh hurting his hip, Josh Ship, on that trip that day. I was there to see the kid, and I was really distracted because I was so, you know, sad and upset for Josh that he had to go through that whole operation and everything. I'm sorry. What, what came together for you in the game against Washington? Well, I think we played a. Um, uh, a very good second half defensively. The first half, and I watched the game Sunday, uh, Sunday night, and uh, you know we really didn't do a great job in transition. We did a good job scoring. We shot 55% in the first half, and we're still down three in the second half. We did a much better job defensively, and they shot 32%. And you know we made some big shots and plays down the end and stretch that game, and uh, you know we're able to. Hold on with the victory. In that instance and in other times, what goes into the decision to choose between plugging and hedging? Because we shifted, I think, from, from plugging to hedging in the second half of Yeah. Um, you know, basically, most of that trace is based on personnel and has been. You know, and, you know, using Josh or planning to use Josh for a fair amount of the game is, uh, and he, he, he still doesn't hedge. He still is only plugging. But, uh, you know, using him with others at hedge then the, uh, counts on him to have to be able to rotate out on the perimeter to players because whenever you hedge, the four and five have to be interchangeable in terms of being able to switch with one other's man. And uh, so that's played into it a lot the last two years because until the middle of last season, I had never plugged before. Well, just we were getting hurt so much by Gaddy on the ball screens. Uh, and that our plugs were not effective in terms of staying in front of the ball and staying in front of him. Our weak side help wasn't rotated, so we just changed it, uh, you know, in the game. And uh, our guys did a good job of it. I think it made a big difference for us. You know, he he liked, he he wants to, but if you remember when we played Washington here a year ago uh, in Poly, he got he fouled out of that game because you know being that far out away from the hoop and 
not being able to just quite move to how you have to be able to move your feet to be really good at hedging. Uh, that's why we changed, and we changed right after that from that point. Yeah, Zeke, Zeke's really done a great job for us. Uh, I think he, you know, and it's been through adversity. I mean, you remember a year ago, he got hurt in the USC game, hurt his wrist, and basically he was playing with one hand uh, the last half of the season. I mean, I don't know how many guys could play without being able to move his wrist at all. That's basically what he was doing is that we had it taped, and he, you know, I give him so much credit for being able to just get through the season last year after hurting his hand on that, that play. Um, but he's done a great job for us and has really been a, a pillar of uh, stability and, uh, you know, very, very, um, you know, good uh, role model in terms of on and off the floor. I mean, here's a JC kid. For those of you who don't know, you know, transferring units from a junior college into a UC system school like UCLA's is very difficult. Um, and, and he's able to been able to come in here and he will graduate on time at the end of next quarter has done a tremendous job in the classroom and is really really a good person and a good kid um you know he I mean you can't say enough about that uh, and uh, that definitely ties into why he's you know also a very good player very focused loves the game uh, it was really nice for his mom and dad and his brother and his girlfriend to all be out here for that game on Saturday, I was so happy for him and and proud of him, and then excited for them to be able to be here in person and share that. This is only the you know, second time they've been out here, and they'll make one more trip. They'll be here for the tournament this week, and then they'll make one more trip for his graduation in June. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, you know. Uh, for this first game, it, it is pretty similar to normal, other than we only have two days to prepare. But after that, if we win tomorrow, then you're just talking about, you know, having to do a walkthrough tomorrow night and then on the day of the game for a 2.30 game, and, and it becomes much quicker uh, when you're doing back-to-back -back games. Uh, so, you know, one of the things about our league playing on Thursday and Saturday, we're the only BCS conference that's pretty consistent on doing that and ha having done that. Uh, you know, throughout every season. I think that helps our teams in terms of tournament time, whether that be Pac-12 tournament or NC2A tournament, when, you're, when you have short, uh, you know, turnarounds. That's what our league does and has done for years. Um, so, you know, I, I definitely think in our long runs in the NC2A tournament that, uh, you know, the way we play in this conference, although it's very difficult, it makes it very hard uh, in some ways helps prepare you better for uh, conference tournaments and, and postseason tournaments. <coughs> I'm sorry, I was coughing. Well, you got to be tough. I mean, you got to be uh, tough to be able to come back from back to back to back in. But, you know, all, all, all the kids that play in this tournament all have aspirations to someday being an NBA player. And you look what they're doing this year. I mean, it's incredible to me how many of these teams in the NBA are playing back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back games on the road, you know, where they're, they're you know, they're going uh, one home game and then back-to-back, you know, it's, it's incredible. So it can be done. Hey, he actually uh, spoke with Josh uh, a little bit this summer because Kevin was here on campus attending summer school. And so uh, I know that they spent some time together. And, um, you know, Kevin is you know, the greatest example of someone who is driven to be great, that it is so important to him that he is willing to sacrifice and have the kind of discipline that it takes to uh, change your body. I mean, that's not an easy thing for him, uh, you know, Kevin. He... Uh, it's something he's it's evolved you know he's matured you know he's now in his fourth year out of college and what would have been his first year uh, out of uh, college if he'd stayed for four years or I, I take that back I see is this his fourth year yeah so 
uh, this would have been his fifth year, yeah, first year out of college, uh, if he had been back in the old days. Um, that being said, uh, you know, it's, it takes a unique individual to have, um, you know, that kind of drive, discipline, and, and the willingness to self-sacrifice. And, you know, for Josh, he has the talent, he has the tools, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to take that kind of, uh, you know, light going off, same thing. You know, Kevin was not – you know, he, he came in here and worked very hard and got in the best shape he had ever been in to that point. But he's taken it to a whole new level now. And you can see that his performance, uh, you know, last night 39 and 17 and so patient in the post on that jump hook over Kenya Martin late in the game. And, you know, we started using him uh, <coughs> to shoot three-point shots as that season progressed his freshman year. You know, at the end of the year, we were calling – you know, I remember playing Xavier uh, to get to the Final Four, and we were calling his number to pick and pop from three. Um, and, and he's just continued to build on that. I'm not surprised at all at how well he's shooting the three. Um, you know, the guy is as skilled as anybody uh, for his size that has played. Do you see that kind of drive in Josh? No, I don't see that kind of drive in Josh right now. Is Kevin? Absolutely. No, no way. I mean, when that's not a, a cut on Josh. You know, Kevin is a – NBA All Star, uh, All Pro, uh, you know, but. I'm saying that's what he he, he wants to be special. This is Scott's asking. That's what you have to have. You have to have that drive and that willingness to discipline and self sacrifice. Yeah, I, I think Josh is maturing, and I, I, like I thought that the article that Plasky wrote that what he was quoted in after our cow loss was really a positive because Josh put himself out there that I am going to do this. Yeah, I don't know if you guys read that uh, or read his quotes, but uh, he is on record at saying that he's going to do this this off season. Okay. Okay, thank you.